Okay, very good evening, Tony and all. Uh, last class uh, we were discussing about prime numbers, right? Uh, so after concluding about how to find a given number as prime number or not, why we follow those things in a sense? Uh, not to understand Nets theorem called Fermat's theorem. It is also called as Fermat's little theorem. Okay. So uh, this theorem is like an identity um, based upon a prime number and an integer. Okay, this is the first version of your Fermat's little theorem. Okay, uh, that is, if you have any integer called a, okay, and if it is rising to the power of p minus one, p is a prime number here. Okay, it will be congruent to one modulo p. Again, the p should be a prime number here. Right. So this is the first uh, version of a Fermat's little theorem. I hope you even uh, are aware of this congruent operator. So it will be easy for you to find the answers if you apply this Fermat circle theorem whenever you have any integer rise to higher powers. So if you have like p, p minus one, um, if it is in this format, you can blindly uh, write it as answer as one. But that's the condition. That is the relationship between this uh, integer a and the prime number p is nothing but both should be relatively prime to each other. Relatively prime in the sense your g series should be one between the prime number and the integer a. And second version of this Fermat's little theorem is if you multiply uh, a on both sides, multiply a on both left hand side and right hand side, you will be getting a power p. If you are having anything a power p, it will be congruent to a modulo p. So whatever the answer you are going to get with a modulo p, the same answer will be getting with a power p mod p also. So I want everyone to note down this uh, two theorems now itself. OK, because uh, this theorem will be worthy for uh, 10 marks. So I want uh, everyone to note down. Take a sheet of paper in the top. You just note down these two versions. Okay. Once you note it down, kindly know, uh, raise your hand so that I will proceed with an example. Because today we'll be seeing three theorems so that I want everyone to have a sheet of paper where you have all your teeth three theorems in the single sheet. So being an open book examination will be easy for you to refer. So once you people have noted down uh, these two versions of Fermat's true theorem, kindly raise your hand so that you will see the example. Still noting down. If you are finished copying it kindly, if not, at least take a screenshot or anything. Take a pic. Later you can uh, copy it. Uh, once you are noted down, can you raise your hand so that uh, I can present? Okay, only version I know. Thank you, Chandra. Yeah. Right. Now we'll see an example. <clears throat> so here they're asking you find the result of 6 power 10 mod 11. And here the value of A is 6. And your prime number here is 11. Right. And if you find the GCD between these two, it will be coming to 1. So we can apply your Fermat circle theorem here. And the power that is exponential power with respect to the integer a here is something but p minus one. So I can blindly write as 6 power 10 modulo 11 as 1. Right. So now find the results between result of this 3 power 12 mod p. So here you can also apply either first version or second version by slight modification of uh, this given numerical. So 3 power 12 mod 11. For example, if you are going with uh, your second version, the second version, what we just saw is nothing but anything a power p will be congruent to a modulo p, right? This a modulo p. So a power here, your value of a is 3 and the value of p is 11. So if I want to substitute these things, I'll be getting as 3 power 11 uh, should be congruent to 3 mod 11 right 
But here I am having 3 power 12. So what I did in sense I split it into 2 half like 3 power 11 into 3 mod 11. So 3 power 11 mod 11 will come under this one, the second version. And then directly it is 3 mod 11. So 3 power 11 mod 11 obviously I will be ending up with 3 based on the second version. And 3 mod 11 I will be getting 3 as answer. So 3 into 3 is 9. 9 mod 11 I will be getting 9. Suppose if you are approaching using first method, that is a power uh, p minus 1 congruent to 1 mod p. So p minus 1 means I will be getting, I should be getting 3 power 10 mod 11 means, okay, then you should write this one as 3 square multiplied with 3 power 10 mod 11. So 3 square is again 9 mod 11 will be getting 9 and 3 power 10 mod 11 if you apply the first uh, rule, it will directly go to number one. Right. Hope it is clear, right? The first version and second version. If it is clear, raise your hand so that I will proceed with the next one. I think your first version and second version of form itself is clear. No response. Could you please repeat? Uh, okay, repeat the I mean second example or first example, actually. First one, sir. And six power ten mod down you're asking, right? Yes. I mean sorry, second one, the first version. Okay, first version. Okay. Okay. So here in this example, here whatever just uh, in the slide, they went for second version, right? First version is a power p minus 1 should be congruent to 1 mod p. This is the first version. So, in this uh, second numerical, your a is 3 and your p is 11. So, if you substitute in the first version, I will be getting as 3 power p minus 1. p minus 1 is uh, uh, 3 power 10 will be congruent to 1 mod 11, right? Or I can able to write this one with replacing this congruency with the uh, equal sign means I can write 3 power 10 mod 11 will, e will be equal to 1 mod 11, right? But my given numerical is 3 power 12 mod 11, but I have the answer for 3 power 10 mod 11 is 1, right? So simply what I will do is since I am uh, left with only 3 square here, so I, I can write 3 power 12 as 3 square into 3 power 10 mod 11, right? So if I substitute uh, my second version here, I can split this as 3 square mod 11 multiplied with 3 power 10 mod 11. Okay. This one will run for 1 big based on your formal circle theorem. So 3 square mod 11 will be 3 square is 9, 9 mod 11 into 1. So obviously we will be ending with the same answer as 9. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So why we are learning this one? This is uh, this theorem can be easily used to find the multiplicative inverses also. Till now we we used the extremely equivalent algorithm to find the multiplicative inverses, right? So we can also use uh, fermat Schittel theorem to find the multiplicative inverses under certain conditions. Like uh, previous, as we said, if you have uh, the modulo operation as a prime number and the relationship between the integer and the prime number are relatively prime to each other, that is G series 1, then I can able to find the multiplicative inverse of any given integer with respect to a particular modulo P. How in the sense A inverse, that is multiplicative inverse of A modulo P will be equal to A power P minus 2 mod P. Okay, if, if you take the first example here, I want to find the multiplicative inverse of 8 under modulo 17. This is your prime number and this is any integer a and this a and p are relatively prime to each other. So simply if you find a power 17 minus 2 mod 17, 17 minus 2 is 8 power 15 mod 17. Okay. So if you are in examination, if you are getting 8 power 15 mod 17, um, how will you find it? I mean, is, is your calculator able to give the answer directly? Just check. Substitute 8 power 15 
pot 17 in a calculator is it giving if it is giving raise your hands just check with your calculator If it is not giving also, at least can know. Yes, I need a response from you people so that. Uh, yeah, Vashini, you are about to say something. Yes, sir, actually it's no. Because it's I don't not. know how to change for modulus. Scientific calculator, I haven't tried yet, so I don't know whether it will or not. Okay, okay. actually, we don't have a modular function in a scientific calculator. Yes. Uh, actually, we in the earlier classes uh, during a discussion model, sorry, module one, uh, we discussed right how to find a modularization calculator. I mean, I hope you are there and doing the class. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, but 8 power 15, what uh, I mean, 8 power 15 divided by 17, if you put it, it will go for syntax error or something different, it will show, right? So, at that time, if uh, what you can able to do in the sense, what is the maximum power you can able to go? Can you go for 8 power um, 6, 8 power 6 mod 17? Can you people tell the answer? What is the answer for 8 power 6 mod 17? I mean, if you, are, if you don't have your uh, model operation there, 8 power 6 divided by 17, you'll be getting some integer decimal, some integer. Remove this part, take this decimal, multiply by 17, you'll be getting your answer for 8 power 6 mod 17. Eight four six mod seventeen. Four. Four. So if you want to find eight power fifteen mod seventeen, you can able to split this as eight power six into eight power six into eight power three mod seventeen. Right. Six plus six twelve plus three is this one. So we have your answer for eight power six mod seventeen is four. Four into four. Can you tell what is the answer for eight power three mod seventeen? 8 power 3 mod 17. It's 2, sir. This is 2. Right. So now if you multiply 4 into 4 into 2, you'll be getting yes, 32. 16, 16 into 32 mod 17. 32 mod 17, you'll be ending up with the answer is 15. 15. Right. So this is one way. Um, Okay, like if you're getting 8 power 15, when 5 power 21, it can go. But if you end up with like this one, 60 power 99, 22 power 209. So these methods, there is a method called a square and multiply method, which we'll be discussing in uh, next two or three classes at the end of this module. Okay, so in examination, if I ask use square and multiply method to find this higher exponentiation uh, values, then you have to go by that method. If I didn't mention anything, you can use this method. You can then you can divide and rule kind of thing. You can split them and you can able to find the answer. Okay. Now we will see in some I mean this is how the, you can able to find the multiplicative inverse directly substituting the values. And now we move on to a next one called Euler's phi function. If you remember properly, in this module we'll be uh, studying three theorems. One is called Fermat's theorem. Or, I mean, the other name is Fermat's little theorem, shortly called as uh, Fermat's theorem. Next one says Euler's theorem. To understand Euler's theorem, we should know what you mean by Euler's phi function. Then comes our Chinese semida theorem. So we will start off with this uh, Euler's phi function. This Euler's phi function will be denoted as um, phi of n. Okay, and this is, uh, phi is also called as Euler's torsion function also. It has two names called Euler's phi function and Euler's uh, torsion function. But generally, we'll be using this phi function as shortly. Okay. And this phi function plays a very, very, very important role in our modern day cryptography, guys. It plays a very ma major role. We'll be seeing in the upcoming uh, classes itself. Okay. 
it could be helping to find the count of some elements those kind of things it plays a major role so i want everyone to listen to this carefully and if you have the sheet of paper where you have written uh, this two tier in that sheet kindly note this uh, multiplicative inverse also note down this red box multiplicative inverse using fermat's theorem once noted down raise your hand in the same sheet you people have to note down the euler's phi function euler's theorem and chai's remainder theorem that one sheet will be uh, enough to help you to solve all the numericals in these three theorems once you have noted down uh, this one kindly raise your hand so that i will change the slide thank you ashley now we move to euler's phi function so there are four rules for this euler's phi function uh, rule number 1 also you people have to note down this one first listen then we can note it down rule number 1 is something but if you take phi of 1 the answer will be zero and if you take phi of any prime number p the answer will be p minus 1 okay. and if you can able to write any integer as a product of two integers like m and n two different integers note this third point very carefully if you can able to write any integer as a product of two independent integers then you can able to write them as phi of m multiplied with phi of n right and one condition here is nothing but the values of m and n should be relatively prime to each other i hope everyone knows what is relatively prime that is both of their gcd should be one right this is a third condition and the fourth condition if you have a uh, a phi of p power e that is you can able to write any expression or sorry any integer as a prime number raised to any integer e okay then the phi of p power e is nothing but p power e minus p power e minus 1 and here p is a prime number so i want everyone to note down all these four points then you will see the example for each and every one of them kindly note down all these four points once noted down raise your hands because very very important once you people have noted down uh, raise your hand so that i'll move on to the next part okay vishnu yeah yeah thank you we get vijay krishna yeah and uh, okay this is uh, how we can able to combine third and fourth room i don't want to confuse you people here we'll directly jump into example so that you'll get a clear picture so here they asking you find the value of phi of 13 and here this 13 is a prime number so you can apply your second rule so phi of p is p minus 1 so phi of 13 will be 13 minus 1 right right now they asking you what is the value of phi of 10 so 10 is a even number so you can't able to apply um, this second rule but i can able to write this phi of 10 as phi of 2 multiplied with phi of 5 Where that is this is value of m and this is value of n you can you are applying your third rule and both m and n are relatively prime right so phi of 2 this is a prime number so phi of 2 is 1 p minus 1 phi of 5 phi is also a prime number so it's p minus 1 is 4 so answer is 4 right so here they asking what is the value of 240 Okay. Generally, if you get like this, what you have to do is since you have to uh, think in terms of uh, finding the uh, common factors, like how highest common factor used to find by such a solution method. Same way, I can able to represent this 240 as 2 power 4 into 3 power 1 into 5 power 1. Here, what they did in the sense they applied the fourth rule for all these three elements 2, 3, and 5. 
okay because uh, we know the fourth rule is phi of p power e is nothing but p power e minus p power minus p power so they did uh, this they applied at, uh, at uh, 2 3 and 5 because all are prime numbers right so 2 power 4 minus 2 power 3 3 power 1 minus 3 power 0 5 power 1 minus 5 power 3 at last they ended up with 64 and you can also say that so why we should go with uh, fourth rule here for 3 and 5 instead you can go your with your first rule itself because first rule sorry second rule second rule right because your second rule says phi of p is p minus 1 because 3 power 1 is also 3 only it's where it's a prime number so you can also apply this one you will be getting 3 minus 1 here you will be getting 5 minus 1 right that is p minus 1 will be getting here. so the same thing you'll be getting here 3 power 0 is 1 5 power 0 is 1 right so it is not mandatory that you have to use these rules alone you can use your rule of your convenient whatever the rule you use the answer won't change last is it clear guys re regarding this uh, oil as uh, phi function or oil as torsion function if it is clear raise your hand if you have any doubts uh, you can ask me okay thank you vijay vashni yeah okay fine no question for you people can we say that phi of 49 is equal to phi of 7 into phi of 7? Yes or no? If yes, what is justification? If it is no, what is the justification? Use a chat box or you can unmute and tell whatever you wish. Whether phi of 49 can be written as this way, phi of 7 into phi of 7. Yes, no. No response. People are saying yes. Can you raise your hand? At least people are saying no. Can you raise your hand now? No, only two people. I think you people are saying no. Vashini, Venkat, Usha, yeah. Any reason why it is no? So it is not, uh, it's violating the fourth rule. It's violating fourth rule, you are saying, yeah? Huh? Fourth rule yes. or third rule? Fourth rule. Seven square also, we can, the okay. answer is changing. Okay, actually, okay, uh, your tone is correct answer. The justification, they went with the uh, third rule, like uh, phi of m cross n. Here you can't able to say it is m cross n because both are same values. Secondly, the GCD between these two is not, uh, and they're not literally prime because both are same numbers. So there you'll be applying your fourth rule, as you said, it's seven square. There you'll be applying a fourth rule, so we'll be getting a 7 power 2 minus 7 power 1, 42 or 7. So what you said is correct. Right. Now we move on to okay, uh, the application, the major the best application of Euler's phi function. I hope everyone remember uh, the set called Setian star. We started with the set of integers, we went with set of residues, then we end up with Setian star where we'll be having the elements which have only um, Elements which have only the multiplicative inverses inside them, right? So, how many number of elements will be there in any Z and star? Not what are the elements, I'm saying number of elements, a count. Number of elements in particular set can be found using this phi function. That is, if you take phi of this particular n value, in this case 14, I can write as phi of 7 plus phi of 2, I'll be getting a 6 and total numbers inside this. Uh, Z14 star is 6 and these are 6 members. Okay. So, to finding the number of elements in particular uh, uh, set of uh, Zn star, we can use phi of phi function here. And one interesting point here in the sense, 
Whenever your value of n is greater than 2, your five functions value will be always even. You can able to see here, I got the value as 6 even number, 42 is even number, the 64 is even number. Here also you can able to see even number, even number. So if you are getting your five function value as the output as an odd number, then you are done something wrong. So always you will be ending up with even number. Okay, whenever n is greater than two, because if n is two, obviously um, it is a least prime number. And, uh, p minus one will be going as one as answer. And if it n is zero, phi of zero is. In, uh, sorry, if it is one, phi of one is zero. Right. Now we move on to Euler's theorem. That is based on this Euler's phi function. We have a theorem called Euler's theorem. Here also we have first version, second version. First, I want everyone to note down these two versions on the same sheet where you are noted down your uh, Fermat's little theorem, your uh, oil, I mean, Euler's functions, four properties, and next go with the Euler's theorem, first version, second version. Kindly note it down. Once noted down, now you can raise your hands. After noting down, can you raise your hand? Then we will discuss on this theorem. Note it down. Yeah. Okay, watch. Yeah. Here. Here also we are using a uh, same similar kind of thing, but with slight modification. We have an integer called a, which is rising to the power of phi of n. It will be congruent to one modulo n. Here the interesting point you people have to know here in the sense we don't have the influence of prime numbers here. Whereas Fermat's theorem will be applicable one and only if your modulo operator is a prime number. If it is a non-prime number, then you can shift to Euler's theorem to find the answer is easy. This is the first version. Second version, nothing but if you have a rising to power k times of phi of n plus 1, k is also a random integer. Okay, so it's it like constant integer. This is k times phi of n plus 1, it will be congruent to a mod n. Okay, the second version is plays a major role in our modern day crypto system called RS crypto system, okay, which we'll be discussing in upcoming modules, right. Now we'll see an example here. Find the result of 6 power 24 mod 35. So if you take, uh, so whenever you have this one is 35, if suppose in examination, uh, simply if you ask us uh, find the result like this means, you have to choose which theorem first. Okay. If suppose if I mentioned using oil as theorem, then no worries for you people. Okay. So this is an even number. Sorry, this is a, not a prime number. So we can't even apply your performance theorem. First step, take the value of n here. Find phi of n. Okay. So here the phi of n will be 35. It will be uh, writing as phi of 7. Multiply with phi of 5. So it will be coming as 6. Multiply with 4. It will be getting 24. Right. And you can able to see in this numerical, Okay. This numerical, it is 24. So here I can able to apply my first version. That is, a power phi of n will be congruent to one modulo n. So simply I apply my first version. I'm getting the answer here. In second version, okay, here I'm getting as 20 power 62 mod 77. Okay. In this example, I am going to apply my second version because second version they said anything. I mean, if you have an integer called a, so in this case uh, your a is uh, 20 and your n is 77. Okay. If you find phi of n here, can anyone tell what is the phi of n here? That is phi of 77. Answer. So you can put in the chat box. I have 77 answer. 
Anyone? Sixty. Sixty. Yeah. Right. So here answer is sixty, and here you have it is twenty power sixty two. Right. So twenty. One second. It is twenty power. 62 more 77, but my uh, phi of n is 60. So I can I want to split this 20 power 62 into two versions. So what they did in sense they went with 20 multiplied by 20 power 61 more 77. You can able to see in the second version. Sorry, it is k times phi of n plus one. So in this, uh, our A is, uh, is, is a, yeah, 20, A is 20, and they went with K as 1, multiply with phi of N is 60 plus 1. Okay. So if you make this one, it will come to A more N, that is A is 20 here, right? So you'll be getting as 20 more 77. N is 77. And another 20, um, this is separately. So 20 power 61, they wrote as 20 power uh, 1 into 60 plus 1. Like this is the part here. They made K as 1 here. And phi of 77 plus 1. So 20 more 77, obviously, will be getting 20. And this part, they went with our second version, which will give me the answer as 20 again. So 20 to 20 mod 77, you'll be ending up with the answer as 15, right? Is it clear, guys? Oh, sorry, Usha, I think just now I saw your chat message, 60, okay, right. Is it clear, guys, uh, regarding this firm, it's, I mean, Euler's theorem version 1 and 2, if it is clear, raise your hands. Okay, okay, nice. Now we can also make use of this Euler's theorem to find the multiplicative inverse. If you see our Fermat's theorem, we had an issue that if your uh, model operation is prime number, we can't able to use our. Uh, so if it is not a prime number, we can't use Fermat theorem. Okay, if for non prime numbers, you can also apply your uh, Euler's theorem to find the multiplicative inverse. That is, here if you have integer a and I want to find the multiplicative inverse of a with respect to model operation n. It is, uh, it is equal to a power phi of n minus 1, right, uh, mod n. So if you see an example here, they want to find the multiplicative inverse of 8 mod 77. Simply they went with 8 phi of 77 minus 1. Okay. So 8 power 59 mod 77 will give me the multiplicative inverse of this 8 with respect to 77. So for finding the multiplicative inverse, we can use three methods. First one is extended Euclidean algorithm. We don't have any con I mean uh, restrictions for using this one. Second one is Fermat theorem. And third one is your Euler's theorem. Okay. In examinations, if you mention use this particular theorem, then you have to use those theorems. If you didn't mention anything, then you can choose any method you want and you can able to solve your multiplicative inverse. Right. And don't worry, sir, uh, so like this kind of bigger numbers, how we can able to solve, we will be discussing in upcoming classes. So that, that method, if you apply here, it will help you to solve this one easily also. If you get smaller numbers like this, you can directly uh, use your calculators and you can able to compute. But like 8 power 59, 60 power 159, 71 power 39, okay, we will be discussed this one. So this, uh, this will be the last uh, formula in your um, sheet. For Euler's theorem, kindly note down this formula. Once noted down, kindly raise your hand so that we'll move on to the next one. Okay, 
If you are clear with uh, this OLS theorem and OLS 5 function also kindly raise your hand. As well as the meanwhile just note it down now. So this theorems multiplicative is okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we can proceed with the next theorem. Called Chinese remainder theorem. Okay. This Chinese remainder theorem where it helps in the sense uh, like it's like a parallel computing. That is if you want to compute uh, multiple congruent equation, but uh, under one slight relationship, we can use this Chinese remainder theorem. You can able to see if you have a um, expression like this, that is your left hand left hand part of your uh, congruent equation, like x is common here. Okay. But here you can able to see this a1, a2, the I mean uh, the residue values are different, and the modulo operators are also different uh, value. But here your left hand side is same x x x means okay then you can able to apply chinese remainder theorem to find this value of x okay so we will see how it works right that will jump into an example here so here they given you uh, this is how the equation will look like they want you to find the value of this x the only condition you people have with you is nothing but this x is congruent to 2 modulo 3 if i supply the same value of x in the second expression also it will hold it will hold good it will be getting 3 mod 5 here and same value of x if i substitute here i'll be getting 2 mod 7 can anyone guess what will be the number this is like for example i've given you a small number if we substitute the value of x the x should be same whatever the value of x you substitute you should get uh, 2 mod 3 3 mod 5 and 2 mod 7 any guess can take a minute or two just give a try if it is possible or not I'm not able to guess. For example, if substitute, I mean, not example, this is the answer. So if you substitute h equal to 23, we can able to see. So 23 mod 3 will give me answer as 2. Same 23 mod 5 will be giving answer as 3. 23 mod 7 will be giving me the answer as 2. So how we are going to find this 23 using Chinese remainder theorem, we'll just see. Okay. Solution using this uh, Chinese remainder theorem. I want everyone to listen to each and every uh, step clearly before going to that uh, kindly note this general expression because we'll be uh, solving the um, I mean, we'll be discussing the steps based on this general expression note kindly note down this general expression once note noted uh, just raise your hand so that we'll explain the steps Thank you, Venkat. Okay. First step is nothing but we'll be calculating a value called common modulus. This capital M means common modulus. It is a nothing but a product of all the moduli which you have in the expressions up to MK. Second step, we will be computing values like capital M1, capital M2, and up to capital MK. So capital M1 will be your common modulus M, divide with your small M1, this one. And M2 is nothing but capital M, again divided by small M2, like this will be going with up to MK. This is the second step. Third step, we will be computing the multiplicative inverse of this M1, M2, up to mk with their respective small letter m1 m2 mk that is we'll be computing m1 inverse modulo m1 what is the answer so m2 inverse modulo small m2 what is the answer like this right then comes the final solution 
that is the value of x will be a1 times a1 i hope you remember a1 is something but your this cd values a1 something a1 a2 up to ak right so a1 multiplied with m1 multiplied with m1 inverse plus a2 m2 m2 inverse plus and goes on up to the last ak mk mk inverse and the entire thing will be undergoing a modular with a common modulus m we'll see the same previous example using this chinese remainder theorem right so you have your x congruent to 2 mod 3 and x is congruent to 3 mod 5 and x is congruent to 2 mod 7 right the first step i will be computing the value of m right m is 3 times sorry uh, m is m1 multiply with m2 multiply with m3 and these are your m1 m2 and m3 right i'm getting 105 now i'm going with m1 m1 uh, is capital m divided with small m1 so 105 divided by 3 i'm getting 35 m2 again 105 divided by 5 which is small m2 i'm getting 21 m3 it is 105 divided by your small letter m3 that is 7 i'm getting 15 okay up to this step if it is clear means raise a hand if you are clear with this common modulus and the values of capital m1 m2 m3 if it is clear raise your hand yeah now you are going to convert i mean find the multiplicative inverse of m1 m2 and m3 so in chinese semi theorem it's your wish you can use any method so if you take this one for example i want to find uh, multiplicative inverse of 35 right that is i want to once again 35 inverse of mod 3. Suppose if I am using Euler's function, I, what I have to do is 35 phi of n minus 1. Phi of uh, n is nothing but phi of 3, I will be getting as 2 because, okay, so 2 minus 1 is again 35. So 35 power 1 mod 3, I will be getting. So 35 mod 3, I will be getting answer as 2. You can just check. And second one, 21 inverse. 21 inverse mod 5, right? This one, 5. Again, I can go with the uh, Euler's theorem or Fermat theorem, whatever you wish. Suppose if I go with Euler's theorem, I'll be going 21 power 5 of n. 5 of n is 5 of 5. I'll be getting as 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 21 cube mod 5, right? I'll be getting answer as 1. You can check. Similarly, I'll be getting, the, getting this M3 inverse also. And in fourth step, I'm substituting values of A1. Here A1 is this one, 2. This is your A2 and this is your A3. So A1, this is your capital M1. This is capital M1 inverse. One second. M1 inverse and this is your A2, capital M2 m2 inverse and it's so and uh, this last one is m a3 m3 and m3 inverse and at last with a modulus of a common modulus 105 right so here the answer comes to be 23 mod 105 right this is how if you solve you'll be getting this as a final answer right is it clear guys this part chinese theorem. Uh, if you have any doubts you can ask me in today's class discussion.